Joining me now is the Opposition Leader, Peter Dutton. Joining me is the Opposition Leader, Peter Dutton. Peter Dutton, thanks for your time. You said today the Prime Minister thanks, should now call an election on his changes. Why is that? Because it's been such a significant betrayal of his trust uh, that was instilled in him that people voted for him in their millions, Andrew. Uh, that's the reality of what happened at the last election. And I think if you're walking away from it, you've promised it 100 times, and you are looking the Australian public in the eye and saying that I'm not going to do what I promised you I would do, uh, I think the Prime Minister needs to, to refresh his mandate. And I think people need to be given the opportunity to pass judgment on his character and on his betrayal of the Australian people. Well, you don't buy the line uh, that he was uh, spinning today. Look, uh, circumstances have changed. Uh, we've had to change with it. <laughs> no, and, and what happens when circumstances change next year or a month after the next election? Uh, does he then wind back the tax cuts that he's announced today? Well, likely. I mean, that's what he was very clear about today at the press club, that uh, any policy is subject to change and nothing is set in stone. Uh, I mean, it was the most significant display of weak leadership that I've seen uh, in my 20-odd years in the parliament. It was quite remarkable. And he doubled down today, wouldn't apologise, wouldn't admit that he'd even made uh, a, a mistake by lying to the public. And as it turns out, when you go back and fact-check what he said today, uh, there are discrepancies, further discrepancies in what he's saying, which, uh, again, I think the Australian public would be quite astounded by. Such as? Well, he makes out that uh, somehow he's been given uh, this letter of comfort from uh, the Reserve Bank or from Treasury. It's a nonsense. Uh, when you look at what Treasury's had to say, uh, there's sort of a bland statement about whether it's inflationary or not. It doesn't give any sense of uh, how it's not inflationary, given that the independent economists are saying that it is inflationary. If it is inflationary, it's going to push interest rates up or, at the very least, keep interest rates higher for longer. So the, the Prime Minister's got a real problem here, a problem with credibility. I think he's destroyed his leadership and certainly destroyed any credibility that he had with the Australian public. And you can't go out there today misleading people. As it turns out, which, again, the Prime Minister omitted from his speech today, over the next 10 years, people will pay an extra $28 billion in tax to the Australian Taxation Office because of bracket creep as a result of the changes that the Prime Minister's made. Didn't make a line into his speech and... Uh, look, as I said in the papers today, uh, clearly the man has lied um, and it's a broken promise and his credibility will be shot. And yet it's has put you put a challenge to you to, because to me the politics seems clear. He wants to portray you if you resist what is done as an enemy of the tax cuts, the extra tax cuts is giving to lower income Australians, to poor Australians. Uh, here's the rich liberals again, you know, uh, socking it, socking the uh, poor Australians, the battlers. So it's, I would have thought that you would have to fight for the stage three tax cuts that you and Labor did indeed both promise but then match Labor's extra tax cuts for lower income earners. Is that indeed what you're going to do? Well, Andrew, uh, again, we've only just received the detail from the Prime Minister in his speech today. Uh, there's certainly uh, many questions that we have of Treasury and of the Prime Minister, uh, detail that we don't yet have. Uh, we still think there's a black hole in the Prime Minister's costings, uh, so we need that clarified as well. And we'll gather all of that information and then we'll be in a position to make uh, an announcement in relation to our policy. Uh, what I think most Australians are concentrating on today uh, is the fact that they've been deceived and that they've got a Prime Minister who has lied to them. And as you rightly point out uh, in your column, uh, he, it is a lie. Uh, there's no sugar coating it. There's no saying that it was a, you know, an off-the-cuff remark and it could have been interpreted either way. He promised it a hundred times. And we need to get to the bottom of their costings and understand uh, the impact on inflation, whether that's going to push interest rates up. Uh, I think the other important point to make is that it's clear that this position was taken after they saw the polling before Christmas in Dunkley. It's pretty dire for Labor, I've got to say. Do you think there is enough money around that the 
that, that uh, the inflation problem won't be that huge if you did decide to not only keep the stage three tax cuts, but add the extra tax cuts for the poorer Australians that Labor uh, promised today. Is there actually money for both? Well, Andrew, again, uh, it's it's a difficult question to answer without the advice in front of you, and we haven't seen that modelled. Uh, the government hasn't decided to keep ta Stage 3 and implement their changes that they've announced today. It may well be that they've not done that, uh, either because they don't have the money to do it, uh, or secondly, because the advice from Treasury was that that amount of money into the system is inflationary, uh, or it could have been both. Uh, but I don't have that advice. Uh, we need to do the modelling. We need to do it in a responsible way, not in a haphazard way, not based on what's in our political interest, but what is in the best interest of our country. And that will be the approach that okay. we take. Uh, but I'm not going to make policy on the run or decide uh, within hours of hearing from the Prime Minister when we still have questions uh, that need to be answered.